I think they want me to play Oprah tonight. Um, <laughs> I'll play your famous, the famous guest. <laughs> <laughs> you are famous. Yeah. Now, I've been listening to all of the uh, incredible things people have said about you and about the risks that Silent Spring takes and took and how you handle skeptics, how you're a rebel. So tell, right? We talked about this before and I love it. And I wanna know, have you always been this determined and where does this determination come from? Oh, uh, thank you for those kind words. They wrote um, them for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe it yeah, too. Okay. <laughs> Um, I think Silent Springs' mission really inspires determination, but my family did too. Uh, my mom died this past summer, so I've been thinking about how my parents and my grandparents were active on a variety of social issues. And I grew up in Baltimore going to uh, civil rights demonstrations with my mom. And she, she always said, uh, use your best judgment. Mm. And I, th I think she meant, you know, like, don't get drunk and jump off the roof just because the other kids are doing that. <laughs> but um, it came in handy in surprising ways over the years. Like, uh, when we moved out west, uh, my new high school wanted me to take chemistry a second time because that fit their course sequence. But I wanted to take physics. And um, so they offered me the chance to either sign up for chemistry or get kicked out of school on my first day. And I think they were pretty surprised that I chose to get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. We're applauding getting kicked yeah, out. Yeah, my, my dad had, it was my dad's first day of work. He had to tell his boss, excuse me, I have to go pick up my daughter. She just got kicked out of school. <laughs> I love it. But I did get to take physics, and somehow that prepared me for the Cape Cod study. Um, like, early in the Cape Cod study, we, we wanted to test Cape Cod drinking water for the emerging contaminants that were of new concern. And the state health department was slowing us down, and I was worried we were going to miss our deadline for spending the funds and we wouldn't be able to do it. And um, I, I thought we could call their bluff. So I wrote them a letter and said, we're going to collect these samples on this date. It was like two days before the spending deadline. And we did that. And if we hadn't gone ahead, we wouldn't have found out that indeed uh, endocrine disrupting compounds were leaching from products into the Cape Cod drinking water. So that turned out to be a really important move. But one of the great things about working at Silent Spring is I have rebel partners all along the way, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. Amazing, yes. <laughs> now, you mentioned the Cape. You said in the beginning, Silent Spring was really a local organization, like you were saying about the Cape, and now it does research, thank God, all over. <laughs> the country, what was the turning point for you or the, as Oprah would say, the aha moment mm. <laughs> that showed that this kind of work had implications nationwide? Well, we always knew that what we learned on Cape Cod would help women in other places. And I was really quickly welcomed into a network of amazing, wonderful breast cancer activists working on environmental issues on Long Island and all around the country. And um, a lot of them are my Facebook friends and will be for life. And uh, so we had that national connection. But on the science side, we realized that to understand what was going on in the Cape, we had to go elsewhere to see what was different. So we were brainstorming about how to um, get some comparison data, and I was really just kind of dreaming out loud and saying, well, I'd really like to know what's in the homes in Richmond, California. Uh, my sister was living there, 
at the time my niece Sasha was born. And I went out to greet Sasha when she was just a few days old. And I was standing, I was holding her out on the deck, looking out towards the bay over the flares coming from the Chevron refinery and thinking, like, wh what are we doing burning petroleum into the air that this tiny baby is breathing? And so then years later, it turned out, uh, our colleague Rachel Morella Frosch had connections to an environmental justice group that was organizing in Richmond, and we formed a partnership with them to get the data that we wanted for comparison to the Cape and the data they wanted to see what kinds of chemicals were penetrating inside homes from the Chevron refinery. And um, the, the data and the the participation in our study helped to support them to win a lawsuit uh, that restricted the expansion of the refinery. So that was really fantastic. Yes. <laughs> yes. And at the same time, we, we did advance our understanding of endocrine disruptors. So it, that was really great. That was really important too. We found that there were really high levels of flame retardants in the California homes. And the governor changed the flammability standard in response. And um, that changed furniture all across the country. I remember our board chair at the time, Cynthia Barakat, went into a furniture store here and she's texting me. She's getting a couch with meeting the new California standard with no toxic flame retardants. Yes. So it was really, really exciting. Yeah. Nice. And so. That California study was really the turning point, and uh, since then we've, we've done studies in homes and schools all across the country. Incredible. Yes, I was telling you how, like, I had something in my house that said California says this is a Yeah, word. you read those tags. Yeah, I'm reading the tags, but they're still <laughs> read those in my tags. house. I got to get it out. Well, um, no, meet the new standard. That's right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, you said in your remarks that breast cancer rates are growing, are going up in young women, and I am an example of that as I was diagnosed in my 40s, um, so I can relate to that. And what advice do you have for young scientists today who are just now taking on this public health issue? Well, actually, I love the advice that you give to young women. Oh, yeah. I, I saw um, the, you should see this, a documentary, Hysterical, features Marina and some other comics who are women, and um, talks about perseverance, talks about showing up, talks about asking for what you need, talks about showing up again, yes. talks about asking for time at the mic. Yes. And when you get time at the mic, Use it. I thought that was really inspiring. That is. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Watch it. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of jokes. Well, anyway. Um, now, this question is, I love this one. If you could go back and give your 30-year-old self any advice at all, career or personal what would it be? Now, this question, if, if I was, I would be like, don't ask me that question. But <laughs> what would it be for you? Well, for me, um, I was a graduate student at the University of Texas, and I had a new baby and a job. And when I told my mentor that I was having a baby, he said to me out loud, congratulations, you'll never graduate. <laughs> huh. So, wow. um, there weren't really models of how to put it all together. Um, I, I went back to work three weeks after Isaac was born, I, only a few hours a week, and taking him with me. But, but still, my advice would be, uh, give yourself a break. Um, don't worry so much. It will all work out. <laughs> And um, since then, I've developed the working mom mantra for the super crazy days, which is, <laughs> this is the rich life that you were hoping for. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. 
Wonderful. So I have to ask, what was the one scientific fact or concept that still blows you away today? Oh, so many, so many choices. Yes. I've, I've been a, like a nature science geek at home and at work and all my life. Um, I read the Ed Young book on uh, the senses this past year. <laughs> And I, I was very impressed that birds can navigate by smell. And I, I've been preoccupied by that lately because some of our New England birds, you may know, were blown to Ireland by Hurricane Lee. And I do not know if they can smell their way back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But um, thinking of Silent Spring Science, I, I'm really blown away by the evidence that your grandmother's health can also affect you. That is, the chemicals that your grandmother was exposed to before your mom was born are passed down to you through your mom. Wow. And, yeah, wow. Um, Rachel Carson wrote, a, she she warned us about these intergenerational effects because she was observing the DDT was making it hard for the birds to reproduce because their eggs were failing. And she, she, had, she said this was a signal of effects on human health and our responsibility to future generations. And well, I, ju I just have to say that Working at Silent Spring has been really meaningful as a place where we get to work on that and really try to make a healthier place for our, our kids and their kids. And the birds. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Julie, for all of the work you've done. It's impressive and, like, it's an honor just to be in your presence, seriously. Oh. So thank you for all the work you have done. Thank you for being thank with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> and what a career she has had. Come on, let's hear it. For Dr. Julia Brody. <laughs>